On July 2nd, Lee's plan is to have Longstreet's two divisions attack the two Federal Corps occupying Cemetery Hill. At around 8 a.m. in the morning, General Hill places General Anderson's division on Seminary Ridge. General Anderson places his five brigades along the ridge, starting with Mahone's brigade beside Pender's division. Then Anderson will place Posey's brigade next in line to the south, then Wright's brigade, then Lang's brigade, and lastly, Wilcox's brigade. Wilcox's brigade will face south because at that time, the brigade is the southern flank of the Confederate Army. Lang's brigade will be behind Wilcox, and it will be staying in the woods that is located along Confederate Avenue, right behind the Florida Monument today. Starting with the federal side of this map, Hancock's and Sickles Corps have arrived during the previous night. General Meade places, their, places them along Cemetery Ridge between Cemetery Hill and the Little Round Top. During the morning, Sickles moves his corps down to the Emmitsburg Road, creating a gap with Hancock's Corps. On the Confederate side, I drew in, for reference purposes, the Confederate Avenue, Spangler Lanes, the one that goes from the barn to the Confederate Avenue, and the other one that goes north through the Spangler Woods. I only placed the three main monuments that are of interest for this presentation. The Florida Monument, Perry's Monument, and the Virginia Monument. There are more monuments along this road, but they re represent July 3rd. Around noon, Wilcox will engage Burdan's federal sharpshooters. Lang's Florida Brigade is in the woods behind the Florida Monument and is alerted to support Wilcox, who will not be required. Lee does not know Sickles Corps is at the Emmitsburg Road at this time. This, this skirmish takes place over about an hour. When Longstreet's two divisions arrive, Wilcox is ordered to shift his brigade to face east, placing two regiments north of the Spangler Lane and the farm. This causes Lang and Wright to shift north. Also, Lang's brigade, according to some of the soldiers' letters, were positioned behind a stone wall in the Spangler Woods for several hours before they took part in the coming battle. First, I would recommend that you go to the National Park Visitor Center and get the Auto Guide Tour map. The, the Virginia Monument is number five on that map. Across the road behind where the vehicles are parked is Wright's Monument describing the second day's fight. Behind the woods is the horse path to the Spangler farm lot that runs through the woods. I am standing in one of the two paths that lead towards the Emmitsburg Road. The other path starts out paved but the, by the monument and is the most used. Most people who come to this monument come to experience Pickett's Charge, not realizing it's the best access to where the second Florida came out of the Spangler Woods. Standing at the edge of the woods, behind me a few feet is a horse path through the woods with a deer path leading to the vehicle parking at the Virginia Monument. Looking across this field is Brown's Ranch. Between me and the ranch is Pitzer's Run. Anderson's division with the second floor that came down Willoughby Run Road and crossed this area to get onto Seminary Ridge. This is the same location as previously depicted, only looking south. Possibly the regimental 
dressing station was located along this tree line and the wounded would have been sent across the field to the field hospital on Hare Ridge. Three pictures will be from this path. This one leads to the first two ridges the second Florida will pass over to get to the Emmitsburg Road. On top of this ridge is the signboards about Pickett's Charge. The zigzag fence on the right of this picture is the north edge of the Spangler Woods. There is an opening in the fence so you can walk in the field or enter the woods to the right. The man between the cannon and the signs is continuing east down the hiking path towards Emmitsburg Road. If you look closely, you can see the man on the hiking path in the distance. He's getting close to the second ridge where the federal pickets were stationed on July 2nd. The Kadori barn is getting closer. Now on the second and last ridge, looking back at the Virginia Monument. Behind the Massachusetts Monument, near, near the far woods, is approximately where the second Florida came out of the woods and formed with the rest of the brigade. Wright's brigade would have formed to the right of the Virginia Monument. I am now back on the Confederate Avenue. This is Perry's Monument along the road. If you continue south on this road, at the bottom is the Spangler horse path that crosses Confederate Avenue. The Florida Brigade Monument is about 100 yards beyond on the right of the road. This picture is looking north towards the Virginia Monument. After exploring the Spangler Woods, this is the only stone wall I found. It runs from close to Perry's Monument to where the horse path crosses Confederate Avenue. Starting on the right side of this map, see how Plum Run starts at the soybean field and goes under Emmitsburg Road at the culvert before turning south and crossing the Kadori Hummelball farm lane. The first Massachusetts pickets are on the ridge closest to the road. The Confederate pickets are on the ridge closest to the Spangler Woods. The second Florida probably came through the woods from the stone wall. They exited the woods and then formed line of battle on the edge of the field in front of the Spangler Woods. Also note that when the regiment moves forward, they do not go due east, but rather at an angle towards the culvert and the Kadori farm. The regiment has come out of the Spangler Woods. At the top of this picture, at the end of the field is the cannons and signboards along the paved path from the Virginia Monument. Notice the incline of the field. Colonel Lang would have stood and peeked over the ridge while the three regiments formed on him. The light green area between the field and the woods is briars and vines. Once through them, the floor of the woods is pretty easy to walk through. Also about 20 feet in the woods, I found what looks like the entrenchments General Lee ordered dug after the July 3rd attack. The Florida Brigade would have extended to the ravine and the closest trees in this picture. Between the Spangler Barn and the 5th Florida would be the two regiments of Wilcox Brigade. By the time Lang had formed the brigade, he would have heard the fighting raging from Longstreet's contact at the Peach Orchard further south. Wilcox Brigade would have already started their advance and might have already moved out of this picture to the left. The second Florida is now at the top of the first ridge line. Some authors place the left flank of the regiment beside an east-west fence. As they clear the first ridge, they will pick up their skirmishers. Wilcox is approaching the next ridge. 
closer to the Emmitsburg Road. General Hancock can see the Florida boys advancing and sees they are heading towards the gap between his corps and Sickles' corps. He gallops south, hoping to grab regiments to plug the gap. He will find Weir's battery, and Hancock guides them north along the east side of Plum Run, across the Kadori Hummelball farm lane, and go into action somewhere between the Kadori barn and Plum Run. Hancock orders Weir to hold until he can get infantry support. The fence behind the monument continues south. The entire brigade, including the 2nd Florida, will climb over this fence. Although I say the regiment crosses two ridges to get to the Emmitsburg Road, you can see that once the regiment came up the slope near the Spangler Woods, the ground is level until they pass this fence. The Virginia Monument is in the center background. The first fence the Florida boys cross is to the right of this picture. In the far center is the Spangler Farm. The 8th Florida would be closest to the camera, then the 5th Florida further to the left. Standing at the fence along Emmitsburg Road, this would be the federal view of the approaching regiment. They would first see the regimental flag, then maybe the, the bayonets on top of the rifles, and then the soldiers themselves. At this time, the command arms port might have been given. By now, the regiment has reached the Emmitsburg Road. Some maps show the regiment north of the Kadori Hummelball farm lane. Some show it to the south. What we do know is Lang's brigade is now aligned with Wilcox and Barksdale's brigades. Wright's brigade is not far behind Lang. General Hancock gets the 19th Maine to move up to the support Weir's battery. The rest of Sickles' corps begins to withdraw from the Emmitsburg Road in disorder. I'm standing close to the Katori barn. In the distance is Rogers Farm across the road. You can see the soybean field the Florida Brigade will cross. The lowest area to the left of the road is Plum Run. The black road nearest the camera is Sickles Avenue. The white fence on the right is a part of the Rogers Farm lot. Turnbull's battery is in the center of the picture with the Kingle farm in the background. I'm standing among the guns of Turnbull's battery, looking north up Emmitsburg Road. The Florida boys will cross both fences north of the Rogers farm and move to our right. I am back on the Emmitsburg Road between the Rogers farm lot and the Kadori farm. The Confederate flag I draped over the fence is to mark the divide between the 2nd Florida on the right and the 8th Florida on the left. Notice that the 2nd Florida will be advancing more at an angle to the right. This picture shows the 2nd Florida might have come close to the edge of the soybean field. Over the top of the icon, is the white dot again of the first Massachusetts monument. The orange and white leaning pole is the Plum Run culvert passing under the road. The icon is in the center of the location of where the regiment crossed the road. The Confederate boundary flag separating the two regiments, the second and from the 8th Florida is to the left of the stone marker. I obtain the average number of men in each regiment. Using the Civil War manuals that have the measurement of two feet per men, I started measuring from Rogers Farm North Fence to get an idea of how much space each regiment fronted based on two ranks. 
the brigade would have spanned from that north fence at the Rogers farm to almost the north side of the soybean field. The brigade is one of the few that advanced on the enemy with only a few fences to cross with no woods or buildings to break up their formation. The regiment has now crossed Emmitsburg Road. Some of them would have advanced down the Kadoric Hummelbau farm lane. To the left of this lane and over the fence is a, there are small trees and bushes of Plum Run that runs towards the road. Weir's battery would have crossed from right to left in the distance and soon the 19th Maine will approach from the distant left. Closer to the fence, the Kadori farm is on the left. Plum Run crosses the picture in the low area. Weir's battery was located somewhere behind the Kadori lot and on the field across Plum Run. This might be what the men of Weir's battery saw and how they targeted the second Florida after the Florida boys crossed the Emmitsburg Road. About the same position as the last photo, Major Moore sent some of the second Florida boys to secure the guns that Weir had abandoned. They will contend with Wright's Georgia boys for seizing the guns, but that's another story for next time. See you in a couple of months when we finish this day with what I call the clash at Plum Run. <laughs>